guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite products for the month of November. <laughs> so if you want to see what they are, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. After a month of trials and tribulations, I am here to tell you what the best of the best is. So let's get started with my channel of the month. And lately I have been obsessed with Lauren May Beauty here on YouTube. I remember, I believe she was like a creator spotlight when I first made my channel like three years ago, I think now. Not quite, it'll be mid-January three years ago, but anyways. When I made my YouTube account, she was a spotlight creator. I don't know what the name was, but anyways, I followed her from there and I've been following her from day one of making this channel and she comes up with such unique video ideas and she does a lot of, like she doesn't buy a lot of the new makeup. So the makeup that she talks about, it's really well thought out. You know she genuinely loves it and has put a lot of trial into the product and by the way, if I was a makeup company, I would go to her to curate a palette because whenever she brings her individuals into like a color story, she does an amazing job of it. I love the color story she comes up with, but I think you guys will really love her channel. She talks a lot about indie brands as well and just a lot of the brands that you don't necessarily hear of all the time. So highly, highly recommend her channel. Also, this is the one time I'm going to speak on it because I don't want to be that channel that's like, buy my merch. No, I'm going to speak about it one time in this video video and one time only the makeup hoarder sweatshirt that I've been talking about is now live on my teespring now I did change it up I made the letters thicker than this because I wanted them to be more visible but I figured since I'm wearing it now I would show you so we have crew necks hoodies I have a long sleeve and I believe a short sleeve anyways I really love this design for my fellow makeup order community you guys know I could, I'm a makeup order and you guys say you are too so hopefully you guys love that <laughs> okay now let's get into the product so we're gonna start off with brushes. So this month, Esum launched a new collection and it has really made itself at home in my collection. Normally when a brush collection comes out, I'll like sit it to the side just to try it out. And these have assimilated into my collection. That's how you know I love it. I don't even have all the brushes in the collection right now because I believe one of the face brushes is being washed. So these are now in my permanent makeup routine. Now these are the V series brushes. So the V series is actually a man-made fiber so it's a synthetic brush and I know a lot of you guys don't use natural hair brushes so this is really really great I can definitely tell they are a synthetic brush but the shapes I always love Esam's shapes and they're so sturdy as well this v50 brush is amazing as a blush or a contour brush and I don't really use the v29 this is a really fat shader brush but the rest these four eye brushes have been non-stop in my makeup routine if you look up videos of me applying makeup or if you look on my instagram recently in all of my instagram reels it's been with these brushes because they are so incredible i've been loving this set so if you're looking for very high quality brushes but are still synthetic hair definitely look towards the Esam brushes they also have very unique shapes which i love two more brushes that i've been loving this month so this is from alamar cosmetics i ordered it with one of their more recent collections that came out a couple months ago and it was the purple palette and i still haven't used the palette it's sitting in my drawer to try just so much came out but i ended up grabbing for this detailed diffuser brush and it is perfect it's not too dense it's actually quite a loose blending brush and it's just perfect for getting in the outer corner and outer V and it feels very very soft as well so I've been liking the Olimar brushes a lot I feel like they're really great shapes and then finally from Refer for their holiday collection they came out with like a brush trio and one of the brushes in the trio is the number 23 and it is just the tiniest pencil brush to ever exist on earth so one of their more popular brushes ever since they really launched is the number three brush we all loved how tiny it was the number 23 brush it gives it a run for its money it is so tiny so this is perfect for detail work since i have smaller eyes i do find that i love to reach for such a small brush perfect for inner corner but it's also really great to just trace the outer parts of the eye or a shadow liner as well and it's quite dense it's not super dense but it does have some density to really allow you to line with the shadow so 
those have been the brushes that have been very regular in my rotation. Moving on, I have, I guess, a skincare product. This is from Laneige, and this is the Cream Skin Mist. I ordered this from Octoly, and I've ended up really, really enjoying it. I think it's going to end up being a staple in my makeup collection, like a repurchase, you know? So this is literally moisturizer in a bottle. It is perfect to apply before makeup. So it can make your face a little bit sticky, like it can sit on your skin, but if you give it a couple minutes to sink into the skin, it is perfect for pre-makeup application if you have drier skin. So especially now that it's winter, whenever my skin feels a little bit thirsty, I spray it on my skin, I let it sit. You guys, my skin feels so much more moisturized and happy, and it's not as thick as a moisturizer. Sometimes I don't like applying moisturizer right before makeup because I feel like it's too heavy. This is so, 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 so lightweight but it really does sink into the skin and moisturize so I have been loving this it is permanently sitting on my makeup desks right now next product I have something really really old and random but I've been loving it so last year in a holiday set I got a mini benefit cabrow and it is a brow pomade and I swore off of brow pomades a while ago I just I don't want to go back to the days when my brows were super thick and dark and box like but this doesn't do that I don't know maybe it does maybe I do look like I have box brows but I feel like this doesn't feel like a really thick harsh pomade I feel like it really just applies a light layer it blends out really easily and it's just a product that I've really been enjoying like my brows aren't in the best shape right now they're not in the worst shape either but they do need a little bit of direction as far as shaping them out and this has been perfect I've really been liking it used to be a big ABH brow person benefit has been winning me over slowly but surely with every single brow product that I've tried let's move on to concealer I actually have two different concealer products to talk about today. So another oldie but goodie, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. I, I forgot how amazing this concealer was from the drugstore. It's so lightweight. It gives you a medium coverage and I really find that it does not crease. It gives almost an airbrush look underneath the eyes. Mine have the, I don't know, a little puff applicator pulled off because these are actually the concealers that I use in my makeup kit. They're one of the many formulas that I keep in my kit, but I knew these worked on clients. I've always really loved the way that they looked on clients, but I hadn't worn it on myself for so long, and I wanted to refresh a few colors, and I kept these two colors for myself, and so I've started using them again on myself, and dang, they are so good, you guys. Definitely one of my favorite drugstore concealers. They wear amazing, and that's what I love about them the most. Next up is from Lila B. This is the Be Present Virtuous Veil Concealer and Eye Primer. Well, the colors in Be Present, and I discovered Lila B from Octoly. I ordered this from Octoly. This is the first time I've ever tried a Lila B product, and first of all, this stone packaging sheet is heavy but very very luxurious if I do say so myself and I think this particular shade is maybe a bit too deep for the under eyes but I've still been making it work I don't really love this for the under eyes I do find my under eyes look a bit dry and crepey when I use this however this is an amazing spot concealer now humble brag haven't had to use this to spot conceal recently I, I currently don't have a breakout I don't even know if that's wood, but currently don't have a breakout, and so I haven't been needing this, but I really like how smooth this concealer blends out. It is perfect for covering a blemish, and you know how sometimes when I use a concealer to cover a blemish, but the second you touch it with a brush with powder, the color just goes away? I really find that this actually covers my zits without looking too crepey or creamy, and it just glides over them really effortlessly, so this has been an amazing spot concealer. Now, powder. I feel like I have a lot of random things in this video this month, but I've really, really been enjoying this powder. I got this in a PR package from some company that I guess they work with multiple brands, so they sent a package with multiple brands, and randomly, the Ciate Everyday Vacay Coconut Setting Powder was in there, and it's so good, you guys. I have not been able to put this powder down. It has a very, very faint coconut 
It has a very faint coconut scent, but it's very smoothing to the face. I really feel like it sets the makeup well. Uh, it, I feel like it sinks into the makeup and meshes just really seamlessly together and it just makes your face look very smooth like I just said so I don't know I don't have much to say about this powder honestly I feel like it does have flashback I don't know I haven't taken flash photography with this powder but it just has that kind of feeling to it but in real life it makes your makeup look really good nobody has ever 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 talked about that powder but I tried it randomly for a video one day and I was like oh this is kind of good and I haven't been able to put it down next up the bronzer that I've been loving is the Tom Ford Terra bronzer. I do believe this formulation is being discontinued. I got this at a crazy discount from Saks Off Fifth. Originally, this is like $112. I got it for like 40 or something crazy like that. But I've been loving this bronzer. Like I said, I do believe it is being discontinued because it's on sale everywhere, which it's a shame because it's a gorgeous bronzer. I mean, hopefully the new bronzer that comes out is just as beautiful because this wasn't broken, so I don't know why they're trying to fix it. It's a gorgeous color and it's as big as my face, but I've been loving it. It's a little bit more deep and warm than the Marc Jacobs Tantastic that I use and I Love it. I love it. I love it. Alrighty. Next, let's move on to eyeliner. And then we'll finish off with eyeshadows. So the eyeliner that I've been loving is the Maybelline Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner. I think Maybelline's been pushing this because I've gotten this in a couple PR packages. Um, and I put a couple in a giveaway, but I'm about to take them out because I've really been enjoying this liner. It is so, so, so black. Let me show you the tip. It is a felt tip liner, so if you don't like felt tips, you won't like it. But I feel like this deposits the perfect amount of product. You know how sometimes liquid liners can be too liquidy or sometimes you don't get enough product out? I really feel like this applies the perfect amount of product and it's super black and it's super, super matte as well. This is one of the best, what is this, pens? I guess the pen eyeliners that I've gotten from the drugstore. I'm obsessed with it. The only thing is that if you go over it too many times it can start to get a little bit thick and feel hard on your lot on your lash line but the thing is it's so black that you really don't even need to go over it too many times so it's okay but just be careful if you are layering and layering because then it, it gets kind of gross all right so let's finish off with eyeshadow palettes I do have four we had some good releases this month so the first one is the one that I am wearing right now this is the Nabla cosmetics side-by-side -side palette now they came out with a whole neutral collection called the side-by-side -side collection and I I love, love, love this palette. At the end of the day, I really am a huge neutral lover and this covers all bases for me. It hits cool, it hits warm, and it hits neutral. And the quality of Nabla, I've really gotten into Nabla the last, I want to say, couple of months. Ever since they were kind enough to send me a PR package, I was like, oh, you weren't playing. Like, your stuff is really, really good. It's an Italian brand, and they have Italian formulas, which are the best, in my opinion. And I feel like the mattes here are so blendable. The shimmers are so pretty and shiny. They aren't, like, the shiniest glittery shimmer formula that I've dealt with but overall for the price and the quality that you're getting I think it's a really amazing brand right now I'm wearing the mostly the bottom row right here the cooler row for my look and again really stunning today's the first day that I played with this row of colors and as expected gorgeous the next palette was one of course that really excited me this month the trio chrome palette i keep calling it a trio chrome if you're an indie brand fan okay trio chromes are a formula but she's referring more i believe to the trio but anyways this is a gorgeous palette i will say the duo chrome shades down the middle they are not what's impressive about this palette i actually really liked the mattes a lot and i've reached for this a couple of times i really enjoy the purples of course and i think the greens are beautiful and i feel like i've created a couple very nice looks with it. I just, the mattes are so good. I think these duo chromes are a little bit more on the disappointing side. If you've dealt with Indie before, Indie just does it better. But if you're looking for a nice, soft, 
duochrome. These are really nice. I do think there's a time and a place for them, but I really love the color story of the mattes in here. I feel like I have mattes in this palette that I don't have in my entire collection. I feel that it's very unique. I feel inspired by the colors, and even though some of the colors go against each other on the color wheel, I feel like they still blend together beautifully. So it's not my favorite Natasha Denona palette to come out, but is a special one in my opinion, so that's why it's in my favorites. The next one, okay. Again, I wasn't really impressed by this in comparison to the rest of the palettes in the line, but at the end of the day, the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes palette, it's a gorgeous palette and I've been enjoying my time with it a lot. So if you have a lot of palettes in the Huda collection, you probably have all of the shades in this palette, but nonetheless, if you don't have a lot of Huda palettes, this one is a really good one, especially I think medium to deeper complexions. This is going to look stunning on you, but I think the quality is there. I think the shimmers are gorgeous, and I've enjoyed all of the looks that I've created with this palette so far. They're very deep and red and rich and really, really nice. So I've been enjoying this palette. I'm not going to lie. I think it's a really nice palette, even though I wish Huda had done something different, gone in a different direction with this palette. She still kills it with her palettes, you know? Okay, and then finally, the palette you all have been waiting to hear me talk about again. Charlotte Tilbury Fire Rose. Now, this is no secret. Everybody who's reviewed this palette has also said the same thing, but this palette is marvelous. Normally, I do suggest with Charlotte Tilbury, be very careful about purchasing the quads because the value of them is very, very not good. However, this is worth every single penny. I don't care what the value is. The formula in here is amazing and unfortunately for Charlotte Tilbury, the bar is now set this high for any further eyeshadow palettes to come out because she stepped it up with this new formulation. All of these are so creamy, buttery, smooth, pigmented, anything you want an eyeshadow to be, that's how these shadows are. She has a new, what does she call it? Super pop shadow. Like she needs to just throw away her old pop shadows because this super pop formula, so good. I am, this is one of the best, if not the best quads that she's come out with. It's on par with Queen of Glow. And if you are familiar with Queen of Glow, that quad for some reason, is extra creamy, buttery, shiny compared to all of the other quads that she has. And this one, this one's fighting for first place. All right, you guys, so that is all I have for this month's favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't think I have any like crazy fashion favorites or anything. I've just been sitting at home working in my sweatpants. So <laughs> that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the products that I spoke about today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.